Okay, okay, Andre, can we finally submit this form? All right, and in this video, we'll finally see what happens when we submit this form. But there is one last thing that we need to include, and that is the name attributes. And then I'll explain towards the end of this video why we need those. So we wanna add in each one of our fields a name attribute. So this one will be first name, and I'm just gonna copy and paste here just so it'll be a little bit faster. We have last name, email, password, birthday. We already have these for the radio buttons, which is good. And we need here cat, dog, Volvo, Volvo. Okay, and we don't need it for the buns because, well, there's no user information there. So I'm going to save that and I'm gonna make this full screen so you can see. I'm gonna refresh the page and let's enter some fake data and see what happens. So I'm gonna say fake, man, email address is fake, password would be one, two, three, birthday will be male with a cat and has an Audi. I'm going to click register now, but keep an eye out up over here to see what happens when I click. Did you catch that? Let's copy this because when I clicked register, this got attached. I'm gonna minimize this and print this out here so we can see it for ourselves. First, we have a question mark, then first name, fake. That's exactly what we entered. We have last name, man. Email is fake something something gmail.com. Password, one, two, three. Oh, they know our password. Birthday, gender, and cat on. We didn't select Volvo. Not sure why, I'll take a look at that later. But you can see over here that the, value that the values that we entered into our form were just attached to this link. And this is actually called query strings. And what it is, it's one way for us to send our information to the backend or the servers because we have to store this form information somewhere so that when we come back onto this page, the website remembers us. This was automatically generated in HTML5 with a form, but form was using an attribute called get. And this get, if I left it as this, will do the exact same thing. It will attach the form information to the URL and send it to the server. There is another option where you can do post and you can try it on your own here, but you wouldn't see any query parameters. So this wouldn't change the bar, the top won't change. And that is because it will be attached to the body of the request, which we'll get into when we get to that section. I don't wanna confuse you too much, but you can see the difference here of why we might wanna use post instead of get, because well, what if somebody was over my shoulder and they can see my password right there in the bar? I just wanted you to get comfortable with the idea that we are sending this information to the back end. The way we handle that, we'll get into later on in the course. Right now, we're just focusing on the front end. The last thing I want to show you was that form also has a action attribute, which used to get used a lot. If you saw old PHP based websites, they'll have some sort of a action.php, which said, submit this form. And when you submit this form to the back end, to the server, run this script, this file that's on the server but there are better ways of doing this now. So I'll show that later on in the course. Let's take a look at this. So we have a question mark and this is the standard. Anytime there's a query string, so we're adding a piece of data to our URL, it starts off with a question mark, which states, hey, coming up, we're gonna have a bunch of data for you. The first one is first name, which again corresponds with the name that we have in our form. And that was equal to fake. So that's property and value. So you can think of name as property 
and the value as man. So last name, first name. You can see here that there's an and sign. So that's again saying first name equals to fake and last name equals to man and email equals to fake some gibberish gmail.com. This is because of something called the URL encoding. And because the URL has special meaning for some characters, such as this and the question mark, it encodes the at sign with something that it understands, but it won't affect its encoding. We have password one, two, three, birthday, gender on and cat on. And I've actually realized why the Volvo and Audi information didn't register. And that is because for the query string to work, as you can see, it needs to have a name associated with the value. So we have first name and fake. If we look at the radio buttons, we have a name, which is gender, and we have on. So you see over here how we didn't send any value. We know that the gender, some button was clicked in the gender, so it's on but we don't know which value. And that is because we should have included a value for the mail so that if that's the one that's selected, a value will be sent. And finally, value. And now same with the select. We should have had our name of the select field be cars so that now the name can be associated with the value. So let's give that a try one more time. I'm gonna delete this. I'm going to save the changes that we just made. I'm going to make this full screen. Let's refresh and enter some new information. Fake, new, email is newfake at gmail.com. Password is one, two, three, four this time. Birthday, let's do female, dog, and Audi. I'm gonna click register. And let's see what we have here. We have first name fake, last name is new, email, new fake at gmail.com, password one, two, three, four. Birthday, gender is female, good. Dog is on. Okay, so we've selected dog. That's great. And then cars is Audi. There you go. And that's as complicated as forms are going to get. You'll encounter this a lot. And there is definitely in most websites that you build, whether it's a landing page, a website that requires registration, this is something that you'll see a lot. Once you understand this, once it makes sense, you can call yourself an HTML developer. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.